A very good afternoon to all of you. Welcome to the live class. Today I will be dealing with chapter number 4 from Hornbill. The name of the chapter is The Voice of the Rain. It is a poem written by Walt Whitman. So hereby, dear students, I am sharing the screen with you all. Please confirm me whether you can see the screen properly or not. Okay, so here goes the screen. It is visible to all of you. Please confirm me that. Can you all see it? Okay, yes, fine. Sir. Okay, fine. So I will be dealing with this particular uh, poem, The Voice of the Rain. And uh, but before that, some preliminary information related with the poet Walt Whitman must be given. Now, whenever we talk about American poetry, two names uh, comes to our mind. One is definitely Walt Whitman, and another one is Robert Frost. I hope you heard about Robert Frost. And I hope you heard about Walt Whitman also. Okay. Now, uh, they are contemporaries at that time. Now, remember uh, about the poet. Let us read something about the poet. The first important information is the name. Name is Walt Whitman. Born 31st May 1819, New York, United States. Died 26th March 1892, New Jersey, United States. What are the poems that Walt Whitman is known globally all around the world? First of all, how can we uh, forget one of his memorable composition, Leaves of Grass? This poem was also included in the re-edited version of the Leaves of Grass. And another poem that is very much popular, if you get time, kindly read this poem also, O oh, Captain, My Captain. It has been uh, written uh, in tribute or giving tribute to Abraham Lincoln. It is actually written to pay homage to Abraham Lincoln. Oh, Captain, my Captain. And Leaves of Grass, it's actually a collection of poems. That, that is a book. The book that consisted of collection of poems. Now, uh, this preliminary information, I hope it is very much clear to all of you. I am now moving on to the most important segment. And the most important segment is related with the voice of the rain. So what exactly this poem is all about? Let us come to the central idea of the poem. And remember here we find that uh, the rain is having a convert, I mean the poet is having a conversation with the rain. And the rain has been personified because we find dialogues been given to the rain by the poet himself. I hope there is someone on the line. Uh, please wait, let me allow. Yes, I hope Tanisha joined us right now. Okay, so let me now deal with the central idea. So as I was talking about uh, the central idea and as I was saying that the uh, rain has been given a human resemblance and lot of dialogues are been given by the poet to the rain. And it seems that the poet is interacting with the rain though initially at the back of his mind he thought that the rain won't be replying. But much to his surprise, the rain did reply. She um, introduced herself. We can say the rain as feminine. She introduced herself. And apart from that, she told at length to the, po uh, to the poet regarding uh, the way that the rain uh, benefits the earth. Okay, And we will get to know about the way the rain is benefited. Uh, for, uh, rain is benefiting the earth. We'll get to know about all those stages step by step. See, uh, the poem The Voice of the Rain by Walt Whitman signifies the eternal role. Dear students, can any one of you highlight or can any one of you say what is the meaning of eternal? Yes, anyone, please. What exactly is the meaning of the term eternal? What does it state? Yes, can any one of you try? Eternal role. Yes. So something that never dies. Yes, definition. yes, very good. Something that never extinguishes. Something that goes on endlessly. Very good. Yes, something that is everlasting. Correct. Now see, uh, I hope every one of you had heard. Uh, it's a very nice answer. Now you, if you read the entire line, it will become crystal clear to all of you. The poem, The Voice of the Rain by Walt Whitman signifies the eternal role 
that the rain plays now this water cycle okay this evaporation condensation water vapor formation of clouds then finally descending as raindrops i hope all of you had read about all these things in your junior classes in elementary science if i am not mistaken uh, evaporation condensation water cycle water formation formation of rain clouds okay all these things i hope you have read previously so you all have a fair bit of knowledge regarding this uh, this concept and remember this concept is highlighted in this poem also but remember it it was not been highlighted uh, from a scientific angle or from a scientific point of view it was not been highlighted it uh, though the descriptions are very authentic the descriptions that are been given uh, by the poet or written by the poet composed by the poet those are very authentic okay from the scientific perspective but it is not written from a scientific perspective it is written from the perspective of a poem that is something very important see the poem the voice of the rain by walt whitman signifies the eternal role that the rain plays in nurturing quenching and purifying the various elements of earth okay the rain plays an eternal role it plays a never ending role the role that the rain plays each and every day now it nurtures it quenches the thirst of the mother earth and it purifies and beautifies the various elements of earth okay and remember one thing the rain doesn't want anything or any favor in return okay for this okay and another important thing is that it finally returns back to the place of its origin we'll come to that right now see the rain returns the favor to its place of origin from where it rises and from where it rises you will find in the text it has been written from the depths of the water and from the land from there it rises finally it returns back to the place of its origin after fulfilling its purpose i repeat one more time finally it returns back to the place of its origin after fulfilling its purpose see the rain itself is explaining to the reader about its origin work and its cyclic movement actually there we find a, a conversation between the rain and the poet now it seems that the poet had a better understanding of the language of the rain and the poet had translated it for the better understanding of the readers and from the conversation that the poet had with the rain at length the rain told the poet about the way that the rain is help helping the earth obviously it is it is nurturing it is quenching and most importantly it is purifying the various elements of the earth it is helping in the process of germination number 1 oh, apart from that it is helping in order to clean the world of its dirt and dirt globally and most importantly uh it helps in the healing process okay not only that uh, the dampened spirits and obviously the entire world gets revived and rejuvenated it energizes the dampened spirits okay and it is basically very vital it is of very it is important obviously for both the plant and the animal kingdom but remember one thing it never it, uh, i mean it never expects anything in return the rain never urges okay never takes anything in return okay now it is an it is a some sort of a work that the rain does each and every time that is the reason this entire concept of water cycle it is something that is everlasting it is something that is eternal okay i hope there is someone on the line so let me allow okay so let me move on right now yes so see this line the rain itself is explaining to the reader about its origin work and its cyclic movement a comparison has also been drawn between rain and music very very important obviously both are not similar but there is some similarity in their function okay that is something that we should note there is something that must be highlighted now what is the comparison now both of them make the world more lively see i have highlighted the entire portion 
for your convenience so that you can check it properly see a comparison has also been drawn between the rain and music as both of them make the world more lively and definitely both of them return to their place of origin after fulfilling their purpose it is music that freshens up our soul our mind revives our dampened spirit rain also does exactly the same thing and just like a good song returns back to its composer similarly the rain after its purpose been fulfilled for the day it returns back to its place of origin okay so this is something very very important any doubt dear students up to this shall i move on to the stanza wise explanation part because remember the concept should be very clear if the concept is clear you can write on your own provided uh, the scientific facts that are been mentioned in the poem those are very authentic but it has been written not in a very scientific manner it has been written in the form of a poem okay so central idea i discuss right now so is there any doubt anyone if there is any doubt please ask me i will be explaining it once again is there any doubt at the back of your mind or is it okay with all of you shall i scroll it down for the explanation part of the poem shall i scroll it down in order to explain to you the lines of the poem is there any doubt yes, okay okay fine okay so let us move on now see what is written stanza wise explanation now if you open page number 41 from your ncert text you won't be getting to see any stanzas but i had divided it into three sometimes two four stanzas like this so that ultimately it will help you to understand the poem properly because if you read all at a time the entire poem that has been written in a narrative way written in free verse if you go on reading it you won't be able to understand it so if you divide and if you read it if you divide uh, two three lines then you read it then again you read the next three two to three lines in that way if you go on reading it then obviously the meanings and the concept of the poem will be crystal clear to all of you okay so that is the that is the only reason i had divided it in this way now see it starts in a very strange way the poem starts in a very strange manner see it is written who are thou that means who are you okay thou means you it is a, it is actually old english we can say who are thou means who are you said i now can any one of you say uh, who is i here can any one of you say who has been referred here as i yes very simple i hope if poet. you if you understood poet. the poet uh, yes correct it is the poet if you understood the central idea then easily you can uh, you can reply me yes you are absolutely right it is the poet later you will find that i been mentioned many a times in the poem uh, but those time it has been referred to the rain but here it has been referred to the poet himself see who are thou that means who are you said i to the soft falling shower have you heard about drizzle it is like that soft falling shower see here it is written what exactly it is the meaning of that soft falling means something that is dropping softly thou means you and shower means actually rain drops okay when they fall continuously on earth that is the meaning of the term shower okay rain drops that fall continuously on earth see this line and who are thou that means who are you said i to the soft falling shower which strange to tell now it was something the poet never ever expected at the back of his mind that he will be getting a reply from the rain but it turned out that he did got a reply from the rain because the rain told to him at length about its origin and before that the rain introduced itself to the poet by saying that i am the poem of earth said the voice of the rain so could any one of you say which poetic device been used here okay because as i told you earlier that the poet has infused dialogues or given dialogues to the rain so from a non living entity it was been turned into a living entity can any one of you guess which literary device or which poetic device i am referring to can any one of 
yes absolutely right very good personification correct yes because it seems that the rain has been personified and it seems that the poet has given dialogues to the rain also okay see here i doesn't refers to the poet here i refers to the rain you are all absolutely correct the literary device or the poetic device been used here is personification i am the poem of art said the voice of the rain okay now look at the word meanings i hope this uh, three lines are very clear to all of you initially the poet asked a question never ever th he thought that he would get an answer but he did got an answer and he had a long conversation uh, with the rain and whatever conversation he had probably he knew the way the rain was speaking to him he later translated it for the readers for their convenience okay so see thou means you soft falling means dropping softly and shower means rain drops okay when they fall continuously on earth now let us come to the explanation part whatever i told to you right now to you all right now that has been given in an explanation let us come to this see as i told you the poem starts erratically in a very weird sort of a manner now why i use this type of words erratically in a very weird sort of a manner because the poem starts with the conjunction and the halfway in the first line of the poem if you look at it critically there is a question mark that means already the poet has decided to interrogate or rather to say the poet decided to have a discussion with the rain but never ever initially he thought that he or he will get an answer but look at his power of imagination it seems that he is having a conversation with the rain and he translated it for us so that we can understand what exactly he had a conversation with the rain because it seems that he only can understand the language or the voice of the rain not us in order to make it accessible to us he translated it in a language that is accessible to us okay so now you see what is written the poem begins with the poet asking for the identity of the soft falling rain shower much to the surprise of the poet the rain replies to his question which the poet translates for his readers because it was something uncanny it was something very strange okay but the thing is that the the rain uh, gave an answer much to the surprise of the poet and the rain had talked at length with the poet and whatever the discussion was the poet has written or written for the reader so that they can also feel what sort of a conversation uh, he had with the soft falling showers or the rain drops okay now see the rain in its own voice tells the poet that she is the poem of this art there lies the theory or there lies the concept of the literary device that is personification the rain is trying to say that as music or poetry gives pleasure to human beings the rain gives happiness to mother earth this is something very very important just like the, the rain is trying to the the uh, see the important thing is that the poet is trying to say that as music or poetry gives pleasure to human beings the rain in the same way gives happiness to mother earth okay just like music or poetry revives our dampened spirit similarly rain also provides rejuvenation or happiness to us okay now let me move on to the second stanza now see not only the rain went on introducing itself but obviously the rain went on talking about the place of its own origin from where the rain had originated see it is written eternal i rise impalpable out of the land and the bottomless sea upward to heaven hence vaguely formed altogether changed and yet the same now this is something very important impalpable impalpable means intangible something that cannot be felt by touching which is the thing that cannot be felt by touching definitely water vapor and it ascends in the form of water vapor and finally clouds are formed see eternal this is a never ending process 
okay i rise here i means who it is the rain so obviously now the rain is uh, speaking about its origin story or its origin how it gets originated see eternal i rise impalpable okay that is intangible cannot be felt by touching eternal means something that is everlasting all the meanings i had given even i uploaded it also in the google classroom i will be uploading it in whatsapp this is very important each and every meaning of this poem is important if you can understand the meaning properly this poem becomes very easy okay it's not written in a very tough way it is written in a very simple manner but yes you have to know some of the tricky meaning so okay if you can know those things it becomes very easy the poem itself becomes very easy see eternal i rise impalpable out of the land and the bottomless sea upward to heaven hence vaguely formed altogether changed and yet the same that means see ultimately when clouds are formed clouds are of different sizes and shapes ultimately see the core matter remains the same though it had transformed into various shapes and sizes but most importantly dear students the core matter remains the same okay see i am repeating the lines once again and then i will be moving on to the word meanings and after that i will be heading on towards the explanation part for your convenience see uh, eternal i rise impalpable out of the land and the bottomless sea upward to heaven obviously see the mechanism is that it moves upward and from where it originates it originates from the land and the bottomless bed of the sea okay and after that or or rather to say from the very depth of the sea and after that it trans uh, it moves upwards or rather to say it ascends upwards in the form of intangible in the form of impalpable water vapors that cannot be felt by touch okay and after that clouds are formed okay and obviously the clouds are of different shapes and sizes yet the core matter remains the same okay it is simply the process that you have read in junior classes related with evaporation condensation you have read about the process related with water cycle the same process as i told earlier i'm repeating once again the same process been referred here authentically by the poet walt whitman but the way he presented it the way he executed it is not from a scientific point of view or not from the point of view of science but from the point of view of a poem okay there lies the only difference but the scientific concepts that we find here regarding water vapor intangible clouds different sizes and shapes and finally it is descending okay it is descending uh, as raindrops these are all very much scientifically authentic okay but the way it has been executed the way it has been composed is pure poetry okay so some of the meanings that you should all know about eternal means everlasting impalpable means unable to be felt by touching bottomless means sometimes we can say depth depth of the sea or the ocean upward means towards a higher level hence means from where vaguely means unclearly not clearly unclearly not distinct we can say formed means made into a specific shape or form that is the meaning of the term formed now let us come to the explanation part see the poet says that the rain is an eternal process of the the water cycle the formation of the water cycle it is a natural phenomenon or, or we can say it is an eternal process also but it takes different forms at different times dear students please underline it this is very important i have underlined here okay when you will be getting uh, this uh, con uh, this material print it out and underline the places that i am underlining right now okay see different clouds different shapes but the core matter remains the same see it rises it means what the rain it rises from the land and the deep sea in the form of intangible water vapor and goes up to the sky there it takes an indistinct shape in the form of clouds and ultimately there it takes an indistinct shape what is the meaning of the term indistinct can any one of you say 
because I told you about the shape of the clouds, shape and sizes of the clouds. So I hope so you can say me what exactly is the meaning of the term indistinct, indistinct shape. What does it mean? Can any one of you say what is the meaning of this line, indistinct shape? Yes, anyone? Yes, could you please say once again? Not in a proper shape. Yes, correct. Not in a proper shape. That is the reason the clouds are not in a proper shape. But the basic thing, basic matter is same. But obviously, the clouds are of indistinct shape. Yes, you are absolutely right. Not in a proper shape. Although it changes in its form or shape. See, I told you the core matter remains the same. There is a transition, there is a transformation we can say in its form or shape but the core matter it remains the same, it remains identical, it remains the same. There is no change in the core matter but obviously there is changes in its form and shape. Since oh, vapor and clouds contain water as I told you so that is the reason transformation from water vapor to clouds becomes so so easy. And that is also a scientific phenomenon, scientific process. See here written, since vapor and clouds contain water, they can get transformed into the other quite easily. And remember, two words you have to uh, remember uh, very well related with the lines that I had discussed, impalpable and eternal. Impalp impalpable means something that is intangible, that cannot be felt by touch. Okay. Uh, and another is eternal. Eternal means it is an we say an everlasting process, eternal process. Because uh, why these two words are being indicated, or rather to say why this specifically these two words are being uh, written by Walt Whitman in order to uh, in order to show it to us that there are many mysteries in the world of nature that are not fully understood, and there are some part of it that always remained beyond our reach for understanding. There are some part of nature that is beyond our reach for understanding. That is something very, very important. And remember the words impalpable and eternal. These two words are also very, very important. Okay. And uh, these two words are related with uh, this poem, particularly impalpable when it ascends in the form of water vapor. And eternal means that water cyclic process, that process is eternal, that process is never ending, that goes on each and every day. Now I am moving on to stanza number three. Now as I told you, you know, it was a long conversation and the rain had told at length what the rain does for the earth. So now we will get to know, uh, we got to know uh, about its origin. Uh, we got to know about its introduction, it gave its own introduction. Now, in which way it benefits the earth, okay? That part we will get to know right now. See, it is written, I. Again, I told you previously that there will be many eyes written later. Those eyes will not be referred to the poet. Those eyes will be referred to the rain. Here also, this eye, it referred to the raindrops, okay? Or we can say soft falling showers. I descend. Obviously that means I come down. I descend to lave. What is the meaning of lave? Lave means to wash. Or rather to say lave means to clean. I descend to lave the droughts, atomies, dust layers of the globe. And all that in them without me were seeds only. Latent unborn. This is something very very important. I descend. I descend to wash the droughts, atomies, dust layers of the globe. That means in order to clean, in order to clean the world of its dirt and dust, it is the rain which comes down in the form of showers. It beautifies and at the same time it nurtures and nourishes the elements of the earth. And not only that, it uh, purifies the natural elements also. Not only that, it helps in the process of germination of the unborn seeds. Okay, that is something very, very important. See this? And all that in them without me. Without me means without whom? Can any one of you say without me? It means without the rain. Without me. It's, it seems that the rain already uh, 
is in a candid conversation with the poet candid means in a very frank conversation and now she is uh, describing all the mechanisms that are related with uh, or associated with her okay everything and what are the things that the rain does actually see i descend to leave the droughts atomized dust layers of the globe and all that in them without me were seeds only latent unborn that means i help in the process of germination also okay descent what is the meaning of descent come down or move or fall downwards remember it finally clouds are formed and finally rain drops it moves or falls downwards lave what is the meaning of lave lave means to wash and droughts droughts means dry spells atomies atomies are related with very small particles globe means earth latent means something dormant or inactive that is that lies concealed it seems that the power of germination lies in a very inactive or dormant stage in the seeds it is the arrival of the rain drops that ultimately revives it that means the rain helps in the process of revival or rejuvenation of the plant and the animal kingdom the rain helps in the process of cleaning the world of dirt and dust it also helps in the process of germination of the seeds so these are some of the important functions of the rain let us come to the explanation part now see it is written the rain drops poured down from above to wash away droughts and dust layers enveloping earth what is the meaning of enveloping covering the earth that is the meaning of the term enveloping earth okay it satisfies the thirst of the dry earth and remember it quenches the thirst of the earth and heals everything that is degrading and is lying lifeless not only that it helps as a healer also it helps everything to heal it helps in revival process it helps in rejuvenating process okay the showers remove the dust particles remember it is written dirt and dust and atomies so there lies the significance of this line see the showers remove the dust particles and make earth clean and green not only that it makes the earth clean and green also eco friendly it makes the earth eco friendly clean and green the rain also helps in the germination process how can we forget that one which were lying dormant dormant means inactive but with the uh, with the spell of rain it seems that all of a sudden there is a sprouting of seeds okay so it helps in the process of germination also so now i am moving on to the last stanza any doubt up to this at the back of your mind you can ask me any doubt or shall i move on to the last stanza there is a very interesting thing i like to ask you all that can any one of you say why the last one and a half lines written at the very end why it is written in brackets can any one of you guess that why so it has been written in brackets not like the other normal lines so why there is a first bracket been given can any one of you uh, throw some light on this that why it has been written in brackets yes please the simple reason is that after the conversation ended it is the point of view the personal point of view of the poet and that is the reason it has been written within bracket see what is written and forever by day and night i give back life to my own origin and make pure and beautify it for song issuing from its birthplace after fulfillment wandering wrecked or unwrecked duly with love returns wrecked or unwrecked means cared or uncared it, it doesn't matter to the rain the rain finally returns back to the place of its origin after fulfilling its purpose and what is its purpose obviously to revive the world okay to purify and beautify it obviously to help the seeds to sprout or to grow and obviously to clean the world of its dirt and dust when all this all this multiple purposes are fulfilled it finally returns back to its birthplace or finally we can say it returns back to its place of origin and it never cares whether anyone cares about it or anyone is i mean negligent towards uh, towards it because ultimately from its perspective it never uh, it never asks for any favor as such 
so see this line and forever by day and night that means hinting on that same eternal process related with the water cycle see and forever by day and night i give back life to my own origin yes i provide nourishment i help in the revival process i help in the reawakening process i help in the process of growth okay and obviously each and every day i do it day and night it's like a cycle water cycle we can say it's a natural phenomenon by the way and we i make pure pure and beautify it i helps in the beautification process i help in the purification process so uh, for song now this is the personal take of the poet related with the rain see for song issuing from its birthplace after fulfillment wandering wrecked or unwrecked duly with love returns whether anyone cares for the rain or whether anyone pays no attention it never matters to the rain finally after fulfilling all the multiple purpose it returns back to the place of its own origin see origin means source beautify means make beautiful issuing means originating or starting fulfillment means completing the cycle wandering means as you know roaming roam or wander we can say moving from one place to another wrecked means cared about unwrecked means uncared for duly means properly or rightly see now what is written here the rain is involved in a continued process as i told you it is eternal we already get to know about it of giving life on earth by providing water to dormant seeds and making the earth more beautiful and not only beautiful but full of greenery also rain apart from that helps in enhancing what is the meaning of enhance enhance means to increase the beauty of the earth that is the reason i told you all that it helps in the purification and beautification process of the earth and in the absence of water what exactly happens everything turns dull or lifeless and dust accumulates everywhere so it helps uh, by cleaning the world of its dirt and dust and atomies that is something also that we should know and remember as i told you the last two lines are written within first bracket why because the poet has been giving his own personal viewpoint and his own reflections on the answers given by the rain because obviously he asks questions the rain went on replying based on those answers that he received from the rain he gave his own personal take on the rain okay his personal viewpoint related to the rain and see what exactly was that the poet observes that the life of rain is similar to that of a song a song or poem is creativity at its best yes now see a good a good poem or a good song what it does obviously we all know it heals our mind it revives our dampened spirits and obviously it gives us a thrilling sensation isn't it the same thing is done by the rain repeated evaporation underline i am underlining it when you will be accessing this material i will be giving it uh, today itself you can underline all this after printing it out okay repeated evaporation and condensation ultimately purifies the rain the entire environment gets wet in the rain dust particles settle down and there is greenery everywhere just like a beautiful song soothes our mind and spirit similarly the rain also does the does the same thing to us okay the poet therefore in this poem though i mean obviously the rain and music are not the same thing but they are here in this particular uh, piece of poem walt whitman has drawn a parallel between rain and music as both have rhythm and ability to thrill yes they have rhythm and obviously they have ability also to thrill and both of them rejuvenate and beautify life this is something very very important so these are the similarities that we find in case of the music and the rain both have rhythm and both have the ability to thrill and both can revive the dampened spirits both helps in the rejuvenation process the music or a poem also helps in the rejuvenation process it has a rhythm ability to thrill to excite 
to uh, to led to calmness and rejuvenation similarly the rain also has all these qualities it also has the ability to thrill it has a definite rhythm also it has the power to revive and also it can beautify life also so the, their lives and ultimately the, uh, we find that there is a significance or a parallel been drawn by the poet related with the music and the rain okay so i stop here tomorrow once again i will be discussing about it and i will be discussing at length related with the literary devices though the poem i did it tomorrow once again the important points related with this poem i will be discussing and along with that i will be discussing the poetic devices or the literary devices also so thank you everyone have a good day and see you all tomorrow in my class thank you thank you everyone thank you Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.